What's up everybody, this is Mike Versperl here and today we're going to be talking about creating a cleaner Milky Way panorama. Now I use Starry Landscape Stacker to do this and you can use Sequitor as well if you're using a PC. So let's jump into this tutorial. So last week I was in Las Vegas and I went to Stewart's Point in Nevada which is about an hour and 15 minutes east of Las Vegas so I was able to get away from those crazy Vegas lights and find some dark sky now my time here was limited I only had a short window to photograph the Milky Way it was up from around 4 15 a.m. to about 5 a.m. and then astronomical twilight started to begin now since I landed the same day it was a clear night I didn't have a chance to scout out this location during the day, so I did get lost, and I ended up just picking a spot to photograph the Milky Way, and then I went back there later on in the day, around sunset, and then I found the location I wanted to originally shoot from, um, and I kind of just ended up blending the two together. So this technique will work well for, you know, if you're blending your foreground and your sky, or if you're just gonna do everything all in one shot, you know, your foreground and your sky together. Um, I just had to blend it because of the particular circumstances that I ran into. So when I got here, I actually wanted to shoot somewhere in this area, but it was pitch black and there was no way I was gonna find it in time because the Milky Way had already started to rise. So I ended up just going into an open location and photographing my Milky Way panorama, which you'll start to see here. So the settings I use were my Nikon D800 with a 15 to 30 millimeter lens by Tamron and my settings were ISO 6400 at 15 millimeters, f3.2 and my shutter was 13 seconds. Now this helped me create relatively sharp stars and um, because I'm stacking I wasn't too bad bumping up the ISO to 6400. You know, if your camera can handle it, you could go up to 8000 or even 10,000 for your stars. If you plan on blending a different foreground um, or stacking your images, it will clean that up. So don't be afraid to push your ISO a little bit when you're stacking. Now, even though my lens can shoot at 2.8, I always like to dial it into around 3.2 or even F4, just to kind of bring back some corner to corner sharpness. And um, this is downscaled as a JPEG just to kind of help speed up the processing of this video because if I was editing RAWs or TIFF files, uh, my computer would start to lag. So make sure you're doing this with your RAW files or your TIFF files. So once I figured out the location the Milky Way was rising, I leveled out my camera and I always tell people to get a nodal slider. It'll really help when shooting your panoramas to make sure everything lines up evenly. But if you don't have one and you're shooting a wide angle lens, uh, you should still be okay with stitching them together. Now it can sometimes give you like a bulbous fisheye effect when you are doing a panorama without using a nodal slider. So that's just something to be aware of. So when shooting my panoramas, I like to put my camera in portrait orientation and then I rotate the lens about 15 degrees uh, for each set. So the first set of five images, I started on the left side of the Milky Way. So let's just scroll through these. One, two, three, four, five. And then I rotate it 15 degrees. And I do another set of five. Now you could do four, five, six. I wouldn't go too far though because you know the sky is moving and the more shots you take, the harder it might be to blend everything together into a panorama. So I try and keep it around four, five, or six shots. Unless you do a short shutter of around 10 seconds, you could probably pull off maybe eight shots before rotating your lens to the next part of the Milky Way. So that's just one thing to keep in consideration. You don't want to spend too much time in one section of the Milky Way because by the time you get to the other end of the Milky Way for the panorama, it's going to be in a drastically different position in the sky and it could potentially ruin your stitching ability. So I try and keep it pretty short. So I took another set of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I rotate it again. And I'm just going to scroll through these. You can see the Milky Way arch. So that is the full panorama of my Milky Way. 
Now what we've got to do is stack these guys all together. And it is a little bit of a tedious process, I'm not going to lie, but it's totally worth it in the end. Let me just show you the foreground before we continue. So I went back around sunset and I found the location that I really want to shoot this from. And you're going to see the mountain range actually lines up quite well with my panorama. I was just several hundred feet away from this spot. So I actually did shoot this in portrait orientation, but because I didn't have my nodal slider and I was focusing uh, closer on the foreground here, it did not stitch well. So as a fail safe, what I like to do is also shoot in um, landscape orientation for a panorama just in case my portrait orientation doesn't stitch together properly. So these are my landscape orientation panorama shots and these will actually stitch together quite nicely. So that's just something you could do for good practice is not only shoot your panoramas in portrait orientation but also do them in landscape orientation just to kind of you know cover your bases in case one way stitches better than the other way. Okay going back to these photos what we want to do is um, if you have them as raw files export them as TIFF files so Starry Landscape Stacker could read them and mine are already JPEG so I'm just gonna open them up and you have to do them in their sets of five so one two three four five So we're just going to paint these dots in the sky area. Hit find sky. That looks pretty good. You could get a little bit closer to the foreground here. And hit align and composite. And that's a lot cleaner than what we started off with. So we're gonna hit save. Um, I'll call this section one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm just going to continue doing this process for all the sections of my panorama and this is what you'll be doing as well. Okay, so I'm done stacking my sets of images and now I'm going to select all 10 sections that I have and bring them back into Lightroom. Let's go to library and drag them in and these are my cleaner panorama images that we're going to merge together let me just show you something really quick so if we zoom in and don't forget this is a scaled down JPEG now if this was a full resolution raw you would see a lot more noise here but um, you can see there's a decent amount of noise still and then this is the stacked image it's a lot cleaner and my stars are still sharp so um, it's a great technique it takes a little extra time but totally worth it so now what we want to do is merge them into a panorama so we're gonna select all the files and you have a couple of different ways to do this you could photo merge panorama in Lightroom but sometimes I have some issues with it when doing Milky Way panoramas especially when it's a double row Milky Way panorama it tends to either crash it or just not stitch together well so you could also use edit in merge panorama in Photoshop and I like doing this and I'll show you why when this dialog box shows up you want to select content aware fill transparent areas by checking that box, it helps fill this dead space in the corner areas where there's uh, no information. So it, it automatically fills that in for you, which is great. So you can see this section right here and right here, it filled it in. 
Now it is very hot right here, a lot of magenta, but it doesn't matter. I'm actually gonna crop that section out. And same with this, I'm probably gonna crop it right around here. So it's not an issue that the color is slightly off. And that's fixable as well, which I could show you guys. So I'm gonna hit Command D to get rid of the marching ants. And you see you have that hard magenta, especially on this side. Um, sometimes that content fill does a bad job. If it is discolored like this, uh, there's a way to fix that. If I actually copy the image and select color mode, I could paint this color away with a surrounding color here. So if I select the brush, and I'll put it around 30%. Now what I want to do is hit Alt or Option and select this color, which is more of a neutral sky color. And I could paint away this magenta. Oops. So here's before and here's the after. You see how well that works? Same thing with the foreground. You sample this area and just paint away the magenta. Now I'm cropping this whole section out anyway because my Milky Way ends here. So I'm gonna crop right about here. So it's not a big issue, but if you ran into that problem, there are some workarounds to kind of help recover that the color that it should be. So I just wanted to show you that. So I'm just gonna merge that down. Now you might notice some magenta discoloration at certain parts of this Milky Way pano, and that's because when I did lens correction and vignette correction on my images prior to exporting them as JPEGs, it kind of made it a little pink along the edges. So when it stitched together, it left that pink in there. And we could also fix that by doing that color mode trick that I just showed you. And let's zoom in here sample this area of the sky that looks pretty good and just paint over the seams of this stitch where it was pink pinkish magenta okay i'm not gonna go too crazy but that's starting to look better already and let me just crop this right now so we'll keep it somewhere around here hit file save which should bring over this image back into Lightroom and there we have it looks pretty good already now you can edit your Milky Way now or you could do it later let me just bring back the rest of my photos All right, so let's talk about the foreground. So you actually might be satisfied with your Milky Way panorama stack and the foreground that's in it currently, but in my case, that was not the foreground that I was searching for. You know, since I was lost and I couldn't find it in time, I ended up coming back to Stewart's Point later on in the day around sunset, and I found the spot that I wanted to photograph Lake Mead and the mountain range from. And it just so happened that there was like this really cool cracked earth, you know, this dried up mud here, and it helped kind of just make my foreground even more interesting than I had originally intended. So that was just an added bonus, and uh, you know, I was really excited to see that. Now for this foreground, I did a landscape panorama since my uh, portrait mode panorama did not stitch together nicely due to the fact that I didn't have a nodal slider. You know, so they are pretty important and really do help to make your stitching process go a lot smoother. So that's just something that you guys should really look into and I highly suggest getting one if you are planning on doing a bunch of panoramas in the future. Now, since the moon was out, it really helped illuminate my foreground, and I was able to keep my ISO 1250. 
and I shot these at 15 millimeters at f6.3 to kind of help bring back some of that depth of field. Since I was focusing more on this cracked earth, um, I did f6.3 just to kind of make it a little sharper back here as well. And then I shot it at 30 second exposures. And I did stack these too. So I shot this section of the panorama four times and then I stacked the images to help clean them up. Even though ISO 1250 isn't that high, you could still see some noise and um, you know I had the time so why not stack and just kind of eliminate some of that noise. So I did it for all of my sets of images here, which is only four because I'm shooting in landscape orientation. I could cover a lot more area in the panorama um, and do 30 degree increments opposed to doing 15 degree increments in portrait mode. Okay, so now what we wanna do is merge our stacked foreground images into a panorama. So I'm gonna select them and also merge them in Photoshop. So go to edit in, merge to panorama in Photoshop. You can do this in Lightroom as well if you don't have Photoshop. I'm also going to do content aware fill transparent areas selected. All right, so there is our panorama of the foreground. So I'm just going to flatten this. And now I just want to bring my Milky Way panorama into Photoshop as well. So edit in Photoshop. Just remember when you're working in Photoshop to work with copies of your images, just in case if you ever do anything that's damaging to your photograph, uh, you still have your original somewhere. So that's just a constant reminder that I like to throw out there. All right, so now we have our two images and what I like to do is just expand my work area so I'm gonna to go to image canvas size and I want to make the height a little bit bigger let's just make it eight inches high I'm gonna make a copy of my images and work from them Now what we want to do is kind of line up the Milky Way in the position that it would be had I captured it from this location. So you can see the mountain range there and we could use that to help kind of line this up. And it's actually pretty close right off the bat. Go to edit, free transform. And you can also go to edit, transform, warp, and this will help you make little fine tune adjustments here. Now what I wanna do is keep the mountain range of my sky layer slightly underneath the mountain range of the foreground layer because I want them hidden behind my foreground. All right, that's starting to look good. I'm gonna actually switch my foreground to the top layer now. And I want to remove my foreground sky. So there's a couple different ways we could do this. And for this tutorial, I'm just gonna use my quick select tool and hit delete. And then command D to get rid of the marching ants. Now you still have this white bar right here, so just take your eraser tool and erase that away. Alright, that looks pretty good. So let's crop this dead space right now.
So that's blended pretty nicely already because you know my foreground isn't super bright. Had I made it really, really bright, um, it would start to look unnatural and we don't want that. Now it is still a little bright back here and we could darken that several ways. So I'm gonna darken that by burning it a little bit and um, as well as right here. So let's make a copy just in case I, you know, I burn it too much, I could kind of change the opacity a little bit. Grab my burn tool and make sure it's on shadows and 1% because we want to just be very subtle with burning. So I'm just going to go along the back area and kind of burn all these spots just to kind of darken it because as things get further away from you at nighttime, they get darker. So we want to make this look natural to what the human eye would see. So that's why we want to uh, burn this. Let me just zoom out a little bit. So here's the before, here's the after. See how much better that looks by making it slightly darker. Now there is a little bit of like a, a magenta hue right along the edges and we could get rid of that by going to color mode. So you want to change it to color mode and let's zoom in here. Grab your paintbrush tool. We'll keep it at 30%, that's good. And if you press option or alt you will get your eyedropper tool and you want to sample an area right here and then we're just going to paint over the magenta hue that we have right around the corner of our image it doesn't look like it's doing much but it's very subtle and it is actually getting rid of this magenta color so here's before and the after before, after. And now we could work on the sky a little bit. Um, I'm just going to dodge my highlights. Now there's many different ways that you could edit the core of the Milky Way. You know, for this tutorial, I just did a little bit of dodging and burning, but you could also check out other YouTubers and see what they do or recommend. Uh, I like to experiment on each picture differently, so I'm not going to go too in depth on what I like to do because it varies depending on the image. So for this, I'm just going to keep it with dodging and burning, and um, I'm just going to flatten my image and bring everything back into Lightroom and you could do some further editing there as well. Just don't bring too much noise back into the image. That's the only thing you wanna to try to avoid. So back in Lightroom, um, we could do some stuff to enhance the foreground a little bit. So I'll grab my radial tool. Whoops, I had black on there. And I like to increase the clarity just to kinda of make that cracked earth stand out. And bring up my whites. Now since Lake Mead is extremely blue because of the moon, uh, we could adjust the luminance and really brighten it or darken it. So I'm going to make it a little brighter. I'm actually going to desaturate some of that blue because in reality it shouldn't be that blue so I'm just going to desaturate it a little bit. Now for the core of the Milky Way, you could enhance it by adding some clarity as well. So we'll just take our paintbrush. It's very subtle. You don't want to go too extreme though and introduce more noise. Again, this is starting to boil down to personal preference on how you like to edit your Milky Way. So I'm just gonna stop right here. And my main focus of this video was to teach you how to create cleaner Milky Way panoramas. So hopefully you learned that guys. And I uh, can't wait to see what you create this year. Please tag me on Instagram. My link is down below. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy.